In the meantime, we've got some new details this morning on that terrible plane crash in San Francisco. That's right. The pilot, while experienced with other aircraft, had logged just 43 hours on a Boeing 777 and had never landed one in San Francisco. Let's get right to NBC's Tom Costello, who covers aviation for us. Tom, good morning to you. Hi, Matt. Good morning. And that's the crash scene over my shoulders. Those lights there across the water. We do know that Lee Kong Cook, who was the pilot, was one of four pilots on board this aircraft. You're right. Only 43 hours in the 777. He'd only flown it nine times, but he had nearly 10,000 hours in total. And he'd flown in here 29 times, including in a 747. So what went wrong? Nobody knows right now. The NTSB is hoping to talk to the crew today. We do know it appears this crew was coming in too low, too slow. They tried to abort at the last Last minute, but it was far too late. The so-called black boxes, the flight data and cockpit voice recorders are shedding light on what happened in the final seconds of Asiana Flight 214. During the final approach to San Francisco, the conversations in the cockpit were routine, no indication of any problems until just seconds before landing. At seven seconds before impact, a call from one of the pilots to increase the speed. The 777 was coming in too slow, below its target speed of 137 knots, just over 157 miles per hour. We're not talking about a few knots here or there. We're talking about a significant uh, amount of speed below 137. Just three seconds later, the crew gets a warning the plane is about to stall, losing lift and its ability to fly. Less than two seconds before impact, the pilot calls to abort the landing, but it's too late. The jet slams into the seawall at the runway's edge. This image from an eyewitness shows the plane's final seconds as it twists and slams onto the runway. They were calling for more power. They tried to abort the landing, and unfortunately, uh, gravity took over, and they weren't able to salvage and get that airplane back airborne before striking the ground. Moments after the crash, as fire rescue crews race to the scene, a United pilot already on the runway urgently radios the tower. We see people, and I think uh, we should, uh, they should need the immediate attention because uh, they're uh, alive and walking around. United 885 Heavy, Roger. You said you said uh, people are just walking out by the airplane right now? Yeah, some, uh, some people are looking like it's struggling. The impact was so powerful. I thought before I left the plane that it might blow up and I might die. In your head, everything goes in for slow motion. You just don't believe it's happening. Meanwhile, our first look inside the plane. Oxygen masks hanging from the ceiling and some seats knocked over. While on the runway, investigators examine part of the tail, a piece of landing gear and the charred wreckage of the Boeing jet, looking for clues to what caused this terrible disaster. There's one more uh, terrible twist to this story, and that is that now appears it's possible that one of the two teenagers who died in this crash may have been hit by a responding fire rescue vehicle. Uh, it's not at all clear yet if that may have caused her death, but the coroner is investigating that. Matt, back to you. All right, Tom Costello in San Francisco. Tom, thanks so much.